We now go to Florida in the Kennedy Space Center where NASA hoped to be celebrating the Artemis launch. Instead, at the time it was supposed to launch, the takeoff was scrubbed and our Skylar Henry was there. He joins us live now. Skylar. Hey, Jim. Hey, Marie. Good to be with you both. Well, a series of issues ultimately led to the scrub this morning. NASA came out to say that they will be sending engineers out here tomorrow to continue to assess the information as to what went wrong on the launch pad earlier today. They say that they are confident that it wasn't an engine issue, however, instead saying that it could have potentially been a hydrogen flow issue into one of the engines on this rocket. So again, engineers will be back out here tomorrow with a firmer assessment as to whether we could potentially see a new launch this Friday. The Artemis 1 rocket is still holding in a launch countdown, and NASA officials say engineers will be back at work Tuesday analyzing data from Monday morning's scrub launch. The team worked through a number of issues today. Uh, the team was tired at the end of the day, and we just decided that it was the best to knock it off. Many of the issues stemmed from fuel leaks that forced crews to repeatedly stop and start fueling overnight. Leak detection equipment went off and uh, stopped the fill of liquid hydrogen during fast fill. Crews were able to mostly fill the tanks when they discovered an engine bleed that couldn't be remedied. This is a brand new rocket. It's not going to fly until it's ready. There are millions of components of this rocket and its systems. The earliest opportunity to try again would be this Friday afternoon, but that all depends on whether engineers can fix the engine bleed. Monday scrub was a disappointment for thousands of people who flocked to the Space Coast hoping to witness the launch of NASA's most powerful rocket. Vice President Kamala Harris was among the visitors. She met with astronauts and got a tour of the hardware for the next two moon missions, Artemis 2 and 3. The work that happened today was a test that is also going to teach us what we can learn about what was working and what wasn't working. Innovation requires this kind of moment. The Artemis program hopes to land people on the moon's south pole as early as 2025 and set the stage for a possible landing on Mars. So a couple of things to keep in mind. Earlier today, forecasters had predicted an 80% chance for perfect weather in order to get this launch off during the early part of the launch window. Now, if NASA officials determine that they will try again on Friday, forecasters say that the weather conditions will only be about 40% perfect in terms of trying to get this launch off the ground. So in addition to all of those hurdles, Jim and Marie, that they were dealing with in terms of trying to make sure that this rocket is safe and secure, Mother Nature is here as well. So a lot of people crossing their fingers, hoping that we see this Artemis rocket get off the ground come this week. Yeah, it's exciting. Skylar Henry at the Kennedy Space Center. Thanks so much. Whenever Artemis does blast off, a piece of Girl Scouts history will be on board. In fact, several Scout science badges will head to space. Badges are earned by Girl Scouts when they learn a new skill. It also recognizes other accomplishments. And let's not forget about Snoopy, America's favorite beagle, is also on the Artemis One mission. The black and white pup is not new to NASA. He's been on moon missions since 1969. This time, though, Snoopy will serve as a zero gravity indicator to show the team on the ground when this spacecraft reaches weightlessness.